I'm very happy to have tonight with us Guilherme Quintero that came to um, Frankfurt to present his newest film. Uh, we're going to have the chance to talk a little bit after the film. I would just like to thank um, Colombia Viva and especially Alejandro Rodriguez uh, who helped us organize this evening. Um, also Diaz de Cine and the team who helped um, yeah, promote and make this evening possible and everybody else who helped out. Um, I also would like to thank the presence of of um, uh, Consul of Colombia, um, Christian um, Birkenbach, uh, also uh, the representatives from the Consulate of Peru, uh, Giancarlo Caballero, and from the Consulate of Argentina, uh, Cristina Linares. So thank you very much for being here. I'm very happy to be having this evening, and now Guillermo will say some words, well, just to welcome you to the film, but like I said, we're going to have the chance to talk after the film. Well, thank you, Laura, and uh, well, I will. I would like to thank uh, also my my friend Alejandro and Yulima that make this possible to Pilar also of Diaz de Cine. Uh, well, and all the organizations that made this possible. Of course, uh, to thank also the museum, the film museum, Laura. I'm really happy to be here. It is not like the first time that we show the movie in Germany, but it's the first time that we're gonna make a screening in Frankfurt, so it's very special, and it's very special for me and for all the team of the movie uh, being here, like in this uh, space, it's special uh, for us. Uh, the film has been like uh, traveling around a little bit now. It, uh, it makes like, it made, it made like uh, the world premiered in Doc Leipzig, or Leipzig, I don't know what is it. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like a big, 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 big fest dog festival. It's one of the biggest of the world. It's one of the most uh, ancient, uh, old festivals of documentary. It's really impressive. And we went there and we were really happy. That was in October 2018. And then uh, we had the opportunity to show the movie in the uh, Historisches Museum of uh, Berlin, the Deutsche Historisches Museum of Berlin. And now this is like uh, the third occasion that we're going to show the movie here in Germany. But the film is going to is uh, had have been um, traveling in Colombia, in France, in Italy, etc. So we're really, really happy, really excited to be uh, also like uh, this uh, this room like that, with the crowdy with people. Uh, like uh, I don't, I know that it's like a difficult moment here in Frankfurt, but we're really happy to be here and to have the opportunity to talk with you after the movie. So thank you very much and I will be there long after the movie to talk with you. Enjoy the film. Thank you very much, Clermont, for this uh, wonderful film. And now to moderate a talk, I would like to invite Alejandro Rodriguez from the Association Colombia Viva here from Frankfurt to ask some questions. And of course, everybody's invited to ask questions as well. And um, you can do that in English, Spanish or uh, German, and we'll try to help with translation if that's needed. Uh, thank you. So first, uh, thank you very much. Um, I hope you enjoy um, this very special film, documentary film. For me, it's a very personal uh, documentary because I know um, uh, Julio Betancourt was also my professor. And um, yeah, so it transported me also back in that time. I want to ask you, um, <clears throat> first of all, of, of course, um, um, afterwards we can also talk. Um, or do some questions from the public. Um, yeah, how was uh, what was the motivation um, about doing this film? And yeah, so you you were like me, um, uh, doing this kind of uh, jobs and, and work f in, in the field, and um, mm. so you you have the the chance to do it, and now you are abroad uh, in, in Paris and um, so what was the motivation now to do it to do the film well it's, it's, a, long, it's a long story because um, actually yeah uh, Julio Betancourt was my professor too um, I made st the studies with Alejandro so it's very special like evening too 
because we like got in in the same semester and we went together in the expedition with uh, Julio with the first time. So uh, yeah, he was our teacher in back in 2001 and uh, he was one of the teachers of uh, a course that um, taught us like the basics of uh, classification and uh, description of the main families of plants in Colombia. And it was really special, this course, because it was like the first time for us as students to go out to the field and to experience uh, this feeling of an expedition. So it's one, uh, it was an, it's still one way to know if you are made for being like a biologist for the field. And I remember that uh, when I was in that course, I really appreciate the the lesson of Julio. And uh, at that time, I thought that I wanted to follow his footsteps and I wanted to be a botanist also like him. But over time, I started to to have a lot of doubts about how the science worked. And then I started to like get farther and farther from the scientific practice. And I started to get closer and closer to the philosophy of science. And then uh, I ended up, I ended my, 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 my studies and I got my, my diploma, my degree. And, but I didn't, wanted, I didn't want at that time to be a biologist. So uh, I went to France and I started to study philosophy. And I wanted to study philosophy of biology because I was more interested at that time of how the science worked than uh, the science itself. And then, uh, but with time, I started to feel, to, to, yeah, to, to feel a, a big nostalgia about my past, about my past as a biology student. And when I thought about that past, I, start, I also always thought about Julio. And so at, at some point that nostalgia was really strong and I, th I started to think I have to come back, I have to come up somehow. Uh, in parallel, I was like, uh, I get, I got closer to the audiovisual world, and then I had like f a lot of friends that made movies, and I be became part of uh, an association that worked for the promotion of Colombian and Latin American cinema in Paris. And I started to work also as a reporter, journalistic reporter for Two Chains of Colombia. So I have like the whole thing, the, all the elements to. Uh, go and come back, but uh, of course I did it. I, I say to me like I don't want to come back as a student because it's not possible. But I want to come back of one, uh, to one of those expeditions with Julio, and to feel again that. So 13 years after um, my last time with Julio, I wrote him an, an email and I say, Julio, I don't know if you remember me. I know that you have a really good memory because it's. True. <laughs> And uh, I want to go with you out into the field and uh, and film. Uh, I want to document, uh, make a documentary about you, or start to make something about you and your experience as a teacher with your students. So tell me, is this possible? Tell me if you remember. Tell me, it's good for you. And he was kind of flattered, and it's, he said, "Of course, I remember you." So, uh, okay, come and we just make an appointment and I went to Colombia. And what that was in December 2014. And then uh, I filmed him there two, twice, once in the herbarium and the second time we went to the Tablazo near Bogota, uh, near to this uh, cloud forest. And then I started to think and to write a movie there. But writing the movie is a long process. And that was in this, um, December 2014. And then the whole process took me like three years and a half. And then in May 2018, I had the movie. So it's, a, it's um, like a long pregnancy for the movie, for, uh, four years. Yeah, yeah, it's like a PhD, <laughs> PhD. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, so the writing is really interesting. 
sometimes it's really joyful, sometimes it's really hard, sometimes it's really you have a lot of anxious, like you're, but it's constant because you're always thinking that. And then I didn't, you have, an, you have some ideas at the beginning, but then when you went to film and to shoot, you say, oh, okay, I haven't think about that and I haven't think about that. So you have new characters that came probably like Christian, or you have characters that you say, for example, at the beginning, I started to film Julio with a lot of students because we were like 20 in the expedition when we were with Julio we were always like 20 divided part groups four groups so we were always white were like six or five with a teacher and then um, I started to shoot and to film a lot with these students because I wanted uh, they that they went part of the of the movie but uh, but with time, I just uh, met um, Christian in the second like shoot, shooting session, and I started to to watch uh, how they were together and how, how they like were like a perfect couple. And I say like, okay, th so the movie is about the two of them. That's clear <laughs> for me. But at that time, I didn't like stop. Uh, completely of sh you know, film the other students, but uh, at some point I say, okay, that's that's it. It's the two of them, and I'm gonna. And that was also the discussion that you have with the, your editor, of course. So, the editing, the editing process, and the shooting sessions always in constant dialogue. You know, so I we went like five times to shoot um, uh, with Julio and Christian, and uh, and between each like a, a trip or between each session, you can have like four months, five months, sometimes eight months, because you have a lot of filming hours and you have to construct that also in your editing room. And then you have to construct your film and you say, no, that, no, no, no. Editing is a process of sacrifice. So you have to sacrifice a lot of things because at the end I had 90 hours and I made a movie of one hour and a half. I have one more question, um, and it's about um, yeah. Um, what do you think about now um, after the movie is done and you have seen that the theaters uh, and the reaction from the public and that that the, the movie has a, a new meaning, uh, becoming a, a new thing. Yeah, at the beginning when I started the process, I didn't <laughs> imagine that the movie. Was that have this like this reaching or that have this kind of uh, screenings or something like that? So, so it was really surprising to me, and it was really, it was really intense and and it was really nice because, for example, the first time was in Leipzig and uh, I don't know if you have been in this festival, but you have like three screenings in theaters that have like, I don't know, 200 places. And the last one, the third one is in, in a big, big screen with 700 like places. There are no full, but they are like 300 or 400 people there. And it was really nice to see how, in this case, the German people of Leipzig, of the festival, like received the movie. And I think that is also because this movie uh, speaks a lot about like this uh, romanticism, German romanticism, you know. And then, for example, you can see all Alexander von Humboldt there, and you can see this feeling uh, of uh, being like a rational being, you know, scientific, but at the same time also uh, a lover or something that someone that feels with the guts. And that was like the basis of the of the thinking of von Humboldt. Of Humboldt. And then I, I think that a lot of people that th when watch this movie, things that oh, can like recognize these ideas that they have of this like expeditionary figure or symbol that is really, really well represented by Humboldt, for example. So in Germany, it was really, it was really surprising for us. But at the end, it wasn't that surprising because of course, this is like the house of that feeling. But then we went to Italy, and in Italy, so we said, okay, the Italian are also so romantic. <laughs> 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 but, uh, 
But of course, uh, it's, a, it's not an easy movie. It's not an easy film, and I know that a lot of people get boring a little bit. And I, I have seen like some scientists telling me like, no, but uh, you don't learn anything watching that, or because they are expecting like more like a scientific old TV movie, you know, like uh, Julio explaining to you how many species do you have in Colombia, or something like that. And that was mm, something that I wanted. I don't. I didn't want to do. I just wanted to to capture like this feeling of uh, that you have and that I had and that Jolima has, for example. That is uh, the feeling of being there, of being uh, like in, in the penetration of the forest, and um, feeling that you can like figure out how the forest is organized, but at the same time, like accept the mystery and say like, "Wow, this is something that goes beyond our thoughts and is." So nature is always like further and further. So um, yeah, and in Colombia, well, in Colombia, they we went to the theaters and yeah, we made like five thousand uh, uh, people in audience. So it was like, like I told you then, like for a documentary, for a scientific documentary, for uh, something. It was it was really really huge, really impressive. Yeah, some. Questions from the public? Yeah, please. Um, uh, good, good evening. Uh, uh, first, first of all, I want to salute you and congratulate because of the movie. Like uh, along along the movie, I could feel that sensation that you just that just just described. That, for example, like scient uh, scientists were were expecting to like get some information to their knowledge but people that do know know uh, a lot about botanics uh, they also like get lost in some parts with the technicisms but you always keep with the sensation of what they wanted to transmit the spirit of like the botanics so my question is about like uh, it's about how do they approach their object of study that is the plant you make in the in the film at the end you make like a key question saying like are they like scientific structures or are they a poem so because along the movie you can see how committed and how how these uh, two botanists love the object mm. of study do love the plant so like First. at some moment you are thinking they are artists they are not scientists they are not scientists looking for answers or looking for to increase their knowledge yes they are just doing because they love it but they i think that they approach the plants with the two of those feelings so but sometimes botanists or scientists uh, don't they don't like to accept that they have like passion or love sometimes they are just really pragmatic and say like um yeah of course i like plants i love plants but they are not being like they are not open their feelings and i think that christian was in the film represented yeah more this feeling and that was that was why christian was so important for me for the movie but at the end julio is the same yeah when julio like took his bromelian he said wow he's a bomb he's a mamacita he's really feeling something and then and you can feel it so I don't think that you can like divide the feelings and the way that they approach the plants. I think that they approach the plants with both uh, feelings on the both sides at the same time. Of course, they are scientists. Of course, they are. They have their egos. They have to publish. They have to uh, have an image uh, in the front of their pairs. But they are passionate. And they are passionate because when you, for example, when I was shooting uh, the movie, and I say like, wait, they're they are really crazy, and sometimes no, because I say wow, but then for me it was also like an, a, a kind of conciliation because I thought at the end like, well, I'm really happy that this crazy man exists because otherwise we cannot like know what we have, no? but I cannot be like them and uh, that's why I I, le I left and uh, but I think that that could exist in several disciplines in science not only in botany but botany can represent 
the best this feeling because you are f in the face of nature. You are in the face of something that is unknown or something like that, or, or, of the magnificence of the forest. If you are, for example, a lab scientist, okay, okay, of course you are half a mystery, you are more like fast in front of something that is passionate, I don't know how to say, but uh, it's more hard to to put that in a, in a movie, for example, I think. So that's why, for example, the figure of the, of the botanist is like the most romantic figure in science for me, because you can see like these two feelings like really mixed. Another question? Oh, here. Sorry. There you go. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you so much. I enjoyed the movie a lot, and uh, I felt uh, so much connection. Uh, and so, w w w what you described, what you are trying to achieve, I felt this fully. Um, and I have so many questions, but I will go with uh, uh, with with a question not about the content, but about the process. So, as far as I know. Uh, the atmosphere in the field uh, is very intimate, and I'm curious as to how um, how the shooting process has affected the the, the 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 this atmosphere. Well, when you when you want to make like a documentary and you make you want to make like your characters like make use to the camera or to the the team, you have to you have to be patient. And for example, Julio is a teacher. So at the beginning, I remember that Julio was also always, always explained to me in the camera everything. So, and I say, I had to say to him, like, stop to explain me to the camera. I'm invisible. But he couldn't. <laughs> at some point, I remember that he said, and I told him no. And he started to explain to my sound engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Julio, no, please, okay. So, uh, and he he understood at the at the end, and that was much more easier when we were in the field, because when we were in the field, they were really like uh, I don't know in heaven, or they were like you yeah, know like kids in a candy store, because they are and they, and they didn't care about the camera, and that was really nice. Of course, sometimes they just. Sp like speak to me or something like that. Julio used to make a joke, for example, and because he, uh, he I was his student, and so sometimes he just pointed to say, "Say family," and then <laughs> <laughs> so it was probably I remember. I said like, "Okay, yeah." So we were like uh, always like joking and always like making a good team, and we were a small team. We were like two, like me in the camera and in the, in the day in the. In the direction and uh, my son engineer, and at the end we were like the fourth fuzz, and we were we were really close. We were like so we were like the part of the same team, and they were like used to us. And so a lot of the image that you watch in the movie was like make it before after after you have to film a lot to make the good plan after. And of course after we we, we ended. At the night, we always, always took like some run and uh, something like that, and then we had a kind of pact because we they end the job, and sometimes I was like, I had the temptation of going further and to film more, but uh, we were like, okay, you, I fi we finish, you finish, and then okay, let's take a run, and then then s some nights I just like. Um, uh, broke this pact, and I, that's one of when you, for example, watch Julio there looking at the fire. Uh, you you can ask yourself if he's a stone or he's just tired or something. Well, this is one of these nights, and then and yeah, we were like really really close, and then we we became really close with them. So it was this year. Well, Guillermo, thank you very much because actually I was very frustrated after being two weeks in Expedition Amazonas and not being able to finish a 90 minute film. Now I know that it's much more hard work and many, 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 many years of, of hard work. 
but actually my question was about your sound engineering because I was very um what was incredible how you got the sound actually and the audio recordings and the kind of voiceover but especially the the, the speech between Julio um and, and Christian so did you use like a boom pole because sometimes if if the shot is too wide it's not a way to put like a boom pole so how how you manage to get such an incredible sound well, I really have a good 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 uh, sound man I really have a good uh, sound engineer working with me and he's from France and and he's really really good and he had all like all the toys and then uh, for example he had like these Sennheiser like microphones that can like uh, capture like all the environment like in 300 and 360 degrees that you for example in Colombia don't use this kind of micros in documentaries really rare and I just figured out that like when I wanted to look for one of these microphones because Marco probably couldn't make it to one of the shooting sessions. So I went, I asked and I asked and they told me like, no, we never like shoot with that here. And so I think that that's, that's part of the sucks. They like the, the success of the film that like the, it's a really, really good thing about the film is that we always like care about the sound. And uh, of course, Christian and Julio always have like the, their micros, microphones, and uh, and we have a lot of atmosphere. We had a lot of uh, atmosphere recorders, and then uh, we had a lot of a huge work in sound editing. Sound editing was five weeks. Just the editing of the sound was f five weeks, and but we had a lot of material. We had a lot of uh, atmosphere of uh, sounds and. Uh, all that we want, and so it was. It was really good. It was really good to have that because that I think that that um, helps a lot to feel uh, to make feel the spectator like a uh, travel or to be like in the, in a immersion or something like that. So another question or commentary. Feeling sorry, sorry about my English reading was too <laughs> No, um, I have a my question. Uh, there's a question there. <laughs> Congratulations, and uh, I wonder whether you have plans to, I don't know, go back, do something like this again. Yeah, what what was like interesting that you would like to explore more that you, I don't know, others can see about Colombia. Mm. Well, I have I have another project now, but it's like also about like the relationship between between nature and man, but not from the same point of view. So I'm fi um, I have now like uh, thirty hours <laughs> of a new project, and it's about a young teenager that lives like in the board of a river, the Seven Color River in Caño Cristales, in the north of the Amazon in Colombia. And the idea is to make a metaphor of the changes of this young teenager that he's exp making like when he's growing up and the changes of the forest and that in that zone in particular because this this forest was before like dominated by the FARC. They the fire went out and then now you have a lot of tourism, you have a lot of a lot of some multinationals that are interested. You have a lot of changing happen there and the idea is to show that like f through the changes of this young teenager of Oscar it's a quite a challenge <laughs> because it's not like a denunciation film it's, I want it to be like more poetic or hmm. so I, I had actually two questions um, I mean you mentioned the film has already been screened in Colombia and uh, have um, Julio and Christian seen it and what do they think about the film? Did they like uh, yeah, seeing yeah, themselves have, in the cinema? They have seen it, I don't know how many times. <laughs> well, it was really hard at the beginning because Christian uh, saw, watched the movie for the first time at Paris before Leipzig. 
So he watched at Paris, then two days after that at Leipzig. At Leipzig, he watched it three times, so it was like four times for more mm -hmm. overall. But at the beginning, I, I really didn't know what was his thoughts or his feelings about the film. So with beer and everything, and we, he started to talk. And he was really, at the beginning, he was not that happy with the movie because he said, I, I, I look so stupid. And then uh, he said, oh, it's okay, you look so stupid. <laughs> I look so naive sometimes. And then, of course, when you're making a movie, you make like a lot of uh, things that uh, like doesn't fit exactly to the reality or to the reality that the other is thinking. It's your reality. So it's my reality, it's my point of view. So sometimes you say, but you say that and that's not quite 100% true, something like that. I say, it doesn't matter, it's my point of view. This is my metaphor. I am I'm being honest with this feeling. And then, of course, it was really hard for him to see him in the big, the big face there. Hmm? But at the end of Leipzig, and he was really, he was really enthusiastic about the movie. And I remember that he was defending the movie, with something, and he was really. I think that it was easy also for him seeing the people like reacting to the movie and say, "Wow," because a lot of people that doesn't that don't know how what that that work exists, they are like really really surprised. They say, like, "Wow, I didn't know that these guys." exist and then they are working at this same moment that we're talking here for example they could be there in Colombia now in the forest and and I was like really interesting to see how he could like change with the public to the audience and now he's just uh, he loves the movie I think and Julio also Julio at the beginning was really hard because he watched the movie without me but with the fam with his family because he he had a sister that was like uh, uh, ill and uh, wanted to watch the movie before before to die and then I sent the movie so they can watch the movie but he didn't tell me anything by telephone, but Julio is not a telephone person, so I said, like, well, okay, it's not a telephone thing. I will go to Colombia and I will speak with him. But anything, anything. And we went to f the Fixi Festival in Cartagena. We went together, we were the three of us. And we had like three screenings in Cartagena. And he was really happy from the beginning. Julio uh, Christian also, they were really happy. And then we, I remember that the first screening, we were like in the back. And uh, Julio just get out like a little media de aguardiente, a little botella de aguardiente, and he was like, okay, cheers, 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 and we watched the movie. And then he start like he, he when the movie end, he stood he stood up and he say like he, he give me a hug and say I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and for me it was like whoa, <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> he like it. And then it was the same process like as, as Christian, because when the three of us are here, so they are the stars, of course, some, uh, mostly of the times, because a lot of people want to ask them, well, about plants, about the, all these things. And Julio is really happy of being asking, <laughs> being asked. So, so it was really, really nice to see, to have this process in Cartagena. And then we went to a premiere in La Cinemateca of Bogota, and he made a speech, a private speech in a bar after with his students, with uh, the team of the movie. And he just made that he loved the movie and that now he understands all the construction. And now he's really, really happy about the movie too. Do you have contact with him? Do you know if he reached the 20,000 uh, <laughs> ends by now? Yeah, yes, he's now in the 23,000 or 24,000, oh. yeah. The 20,000 was rich in, I think that was rich in Chiribiquete. So it's like a, a really special park in Colombia that is really, really hard to have access to this park. And they were working like in this uh, scientist uh, commission to uh, declare the park as a uh, worldwide uh, preserve. How do you say like a worldwide uh, preservation zone? And I think that uh, yeah, yeah, he had he was with uh, other botanists, and one of the botanists had like a bottle of whiskey, 
like a 12 years bottle of whiskey, and that's like a kind of goal for them in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, Julio, if you make it for the 20,000, we're gonna drink this bottle. And so he was really hurry to find this 20,000. <laughs> and he, I think he made it, yeah, he made it. And now he's in 24,000, or something like that, yeah. But yeah, it's not like 24,000 species, because sometimes he just repeat the same species, it's more specimen, so it's for 24,000 specimens that he had just because you can make like the same specimen in one forest and in other forests and the two of them are different discoveries. Do you have more questions, comments? Yeah, one second. Uh, thank you very much for the for the film. I had one question regarding the use of newspapers. I know that the that this kind of specimens are kind of a fr uh, way to freeze time, but also the way the way they are wrapped is also a way like you know the time where it happened like. For example, you see about Santos receiving the Nobel Prize or this controversy uh, regarding the, the flag in the US. So I wanted to ask you, it was on purpose, like did you choose the type of... No, it, was, it wasn't on purpose. For example, I don't know if you have noticed like the first time that you have, that you watch a newspaper is Santos and the title is uh, From the Impossible to the Possible, something like that, because like, it's talking about the peace process and it's talking about them too. Uh, from the how can you like make a census of the nature is impossible no it wasn't on, on purpose but um, of course it was on purpose when I saw that in the editing room I say ah oh, how this plan is interesting and and for example when you saw the other ones no always is like a, a casual thing for example you know when Christian is looking oh I didn't, I didn't know that BB King was dead something like that uh, no, it wasn't on purpose. It was like, whoa, okay, that's a really good moment. <laughs> and and I had more of these moments. I have a lot of more than these moments. Oh, ring, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes those newspapers are really old, so they are looking like news of one year before that. So I say, ah, remember, yeah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's take a look, and they read or something like that, you know. And it's interesting, you know, for example, the, one of the first time that I was like showing one of the editings of one of my friends and colleagues and uh, he told me it's really nice and really poetic that so to watch these people as you said like trying to make in history natural history try to write in like the memory of the forest and making that with the memory of the humankind in newspapers so it's like history containing history I said whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Guillermo, and also thank you very much for being here, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Well, thank you. Thank you, Alejandro, and thank you to everyone. <laughs>